I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, those who have been watching my videos since probably 2017 may recognize this system, well the case that it's in. Um, I was using this chassis there for a while before I resurrected the Plexi. Um, essentially the parts that are, most of the parts that are on the Plexi came out of this machine here. So this case had been sitting down on the floor for all this time and I decided to put it to new use. My grandpa, he's a uh, his computer is getting quite dated, and I mean quite dated. And I'm replacing it with this. I figured, you know, I wanted to get on to uh, make use of this chassis, and um, but I also want to keep it in the family, keep it close. I don't want to just sell it off to somebody. So this is this is uh, what I call a hack job of an e machine case. Uh, I took an e machine case cut a giant hole on the side, mounted this plexiglass, which wasn't the best job. It's got a crack there and a crack down there. I did this back in, um, right after I graduated high school back in 2009. So, yeah. I did that as well as I actually took Dremel. I, I cut this out with a Dremel, by the way, guys. Yeah, this is a Dremel cutoff wheel. That was quite a bit of effort because this is actually pretty thick metal. But, um, I also took the Dremel um, one of the different tools that I had and actually scribed in next gen deluxe into the side into the side panel. Yeah, e machines called these cases uh next gens. Um this was the case that they used from roughly two thousand two through two thousand seven, early two thousand seven, before they switched over to the newer style case which they referred to as the E Cooper. But this was um this was the next gen. This is a later model next gen case that has the card reader and stuff like that. Not it's better than the floppy disk drive. But uh Yeah, so as I mentioned I had a, in a recent video I had a whole bunch of stuff that I'm trying to make reuse of. Practically most of what's in this thing here is um hand me down parts that were um from those Ryzen um uh, APU upgrades from Last year in 2018, so all this uh, excess hardware I want to make use of. So this is a uh, it's an Intel Core 2 Duo. Let me pull up the specs here. So I'm in the process of setting up this machine for my grandpa. It's a Core 2 Duo 6320 1.86 gig processor. I have three gigs of DDR2 memory installed. So, like I mentioned, it's just stuff that was uh, left over from those upgrades. And my grandpa, his uh, the, this is this kind of more the subject of this video is, what exactly can you run Windows 10 on? Well, pretty much anything that Windows 7 can run on, for the most part. Um, I think the earliest hardware you can run Windows 10 on as far as CPUs goes would be probably the AMD K8 series starting with socket 754 or the Intel LGA775 Pentium 4. If I can if I can recall from memory the earliest hardware you can run Windows 10 on as far as architecture goes or CPUs goes would probably be the AMD K8 series um, CPU starting with the Athlon 64, probably from socket 754 era, and with Intel, the earliest you can run Windows 10 on would be the Pentium 4 Prescott, and I believe that would be starting with the LGA 775. I don't think it would run on the socket 478 Prescott CPUs. It's, there's a specific reason why. Um, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head. This has been a while, but. Windows 10 will run on uh, pretty old stuff. Um, I'd recommend it having at least two or three gigs of RAM for a basic computer. Now, don't expect something like that to be really uh, snappy in performance, but if you know someone who's just wanting a computer to just check email or browse Facebook or um, like play solitaire and stuff on, I mean, it'd be perfect for that. But uh, yeah. 
Windows 10 is 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 it's kind of amazing. The uh, computer we're upgrading my grandpa from is a uh, almost stock e-machine system from 2005. It's got a uh, Athlon 64 single core socket 939. Uh, I think it's a 3200 plus Venus uh, Venus core CPU with uh, three gigs of DDR400. I was running two gigs of DDR400 in it there for a while, but upped it to three gigs to help things perform a little bit better. Tossed in a, a Radeon HD2400 Pro graphics card, which did help with graphics a little bit with video playback and stuff. But um, I mean, he's been using that thing all this time for playing like solitaire and browsing Facebook. But I wanted to go ahead and build something that's at least a little bit better for him. Like I say, he just he just he pretty much just plays uh, free cell and browses Facebook and the internet, not too much more than that. So. So yeah, this uh, this system again is a uh, Core 2 Duo 6320 1.86 gig LGA775. The graphics card I got in this thing. It's an NVIDIA. Let me see. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head while I slapped in this thing. So the graphics card running this thing is the NVIDIA GeForce GT220. GPU and this graphics card was included with some of that stuff that I had gotten from those upgrade from leftover from the upgrades and what I did with this thing was since the previous heatsink fan assembly on it was just that the fan was rattling real bad and turns out it was a non serviceable fan, of course. That's 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 wonderful. And also, since it was not, it was a substandard design. I couldn't just either replace a fan on it. It used a four-pin, six-millimeter fan, which I simply don't have any of those. And I would have also had to have uh, actually cut out the the fan body from the rest of the like the, the cage. I mean, if it was a simple three-pin fan, I could have I could have made it work, but I didn't have the stuff on hand. So, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about. This is the old graphics card out of Mid-Tower Deluxe from the previous generation. And this card, now this video card, the fan failed just three months after I had started using it. <laughs> because it was a cheap piece of crap fan and it was non-serviceable. You couldn't oil it, you couldn't oil it. So it's a uh, Radeon HD 6750 XFX. What I did with this thing was uh, I took a decent quality Delta fan from a, uh, so this is actually a 60 millimeter. So the fan that was on that was like a uh, crap of 40, 40 millimeter, something like that. So what I did is I took the, uh, the fan from an Athlon XP heatsink fan, factory Athlon XP heatsink fan, and I just took the body out and actually hot glued this fan onto the heatsink. The heatsink never got hot enough to melt the glue, and it and it ran like this for like five or six years, something like that. So it's a yeah ball bearing fan, and it, and of course to top things off has the AMD emblem in it, which makes a nice uh, touch for his graphics card. But yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. So in the case of this, what I did was um. I took a Norbridge heatsink off an old motherboard and took a little, a little bitty, not even sure what size fan that is. It's the ones that they used back on the P5 Pentium processors back in 95, like 93 to 95. Um, had one of those laying around in good working condition. Uh, fastened it to the heatsink and managed to make it fit on this uh, graphics card. That way, uh, this thing will have a decent cooler again. Um, <laughs> So that's why I'm not that's why I'm not exactly a fan of some of some of the uh, active cooling solutions these graphics cards used because I mean especially when they use cheap crappy fans they should use fans that are of better quality but anyways graphics card aside um, the hard drive is a uh, old Hitachi 160 gigabyte drive. Now I tell you the Hitachi Death Star drives are pretty dang reliable I will say that. Um, 
Now, I've heard bad things about the IBM Desk Stars, but the Hitachi Desk Stars, even back from the ones that were uh, running um, IDE, those things were just nearly... I hardly ever saw them fail. As a matter of fact, Grandpa's computer that's currently in service right now is running an 80GB drive of an e-machine. I don't know if it was the original one to that computer, but it may have... It was definitely from an e-machine system, I do believe. Now, this one... This this hard drive is, uh, interestingly enough, it's from the time period when SATA hard drives were first really starting to uh, make her presence. So this hard drive has not only the typical SATA power connector that you have nowadays, but it also included a 4-pin Molex connector, which I'm using for this older power supply. Power supply is a Bestec ATX25012Z. Now, if any of you guys have a heart attack, no, this is not the factory power supply from this e-machine system. If you happen to uh, want to build an older e-machine's tower, do not use the factory Bestec 250-watt supply because the ATX-250-12 E units had a flawed design in their 5-volt standby circuit, which would fry your motherboard. This one does not have that flaw. Um... Now this one, I did a full recap on it. It's got fresh capacitors in it. And I'll say, these power supplies are, I mean, they're pretty dang capable, I'll say. Um, running this, you know, this setup here, it's it's not having any issues at all. Um, the fan is not even ramping up or nothing like that. So, I've used these units um, several times when I was doing the Ryzen uh, 3 and Ryzen 5 APU system builds. Some of them were just existing supplies in those systems. I just kept them in there. I checked them over to make sure they were working fine and there you have it. But um, So yeah. This machine here uh, <laughs> I, figured I'd, I figured I'd do this because you know, of course my, my grandpa, his birthday is next month and he'll be turning 90 years old. And I figured why not get him a computer that looks a little bit cooler? That way you can see inside it and you know, see all the components and things. You know, people, I know people who aren't really into PCs love it. Um, a lot of times when people see my system at Tower Lux, they just trip out if they even notice it. Sometimes they don't even notice it. Don't even, don't even notice it. But, um, but I figured you know, I'd, I'd do this, so I also included a cold cathode light. I had several of those laying around. But yeah, um... I know this video is kind of all over the place, but um, I'm finally getting a, a new home for this uh, chassis, and I figured it'd be cool for my grandpa to get to get to have be able to see inside his computer. But also, I just want to talk a little bit about you know Windows 10, and what you could run it on. I mean, I guess before I wrap it up, this is another system from the company that I did the Ryzen builds for. And this one, of course, I wouldn't, I couldn't upgrade it to Ryzen because uh, it's a, it's a typical Dell system that you can't really do much with. Uh, you know, it uses a lot of proprietary designs in it, so I just did a full out replacement with this one. And this one's running a Pentium D820, believe it is, CPU, probably two gigabytes or three gigabytes of DDR2. Probably a 160 gig hard drive. Definitely not the latest and greatest by any means, but Windows 10 didn't seem to really have any issues with it. So, there you have it. Um, so, I, I figured, you know, with, with Windows 7 ending in just a few, Windows 7 support ending in just a few days, uh, even if your computer is an older system running Windows 7, um, I can definitely I can say that Windows 10 should run. I'd say just fine on anything that was built for Windows Vista or later. Now this system was actually this system originally had Windows XP on it, um, and then it got upgraded to Vista and then to Windows 7, and then at one point later on got Windows 10. So this was this was a uh, workhorse that got. Um, was in for service. It was in service for several years, and um, so if you have something older like this, and are concerned about Windows 7 support ending, chances are the machine should run Windows 10 just fine if it's running Windows 7 okay. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.
Well, everybody, that's it for this video. But don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel. And also, don't forget to tick the bell so that way you'll get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat, interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back and thank you for your support.